Hey guys, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at different virtualization technologies including virtual machines and containers. This video forms part of the CCMP Enterprise Core Exam Series 350-401. The exam topics covered as part of this video are 2.1a which is to describe hypervisors type 1 and type 2 and 2.1b which is to describe a virtual machine. So first things first, let's take a look at what virtualization actually is. So before we started to use virtualization, we used to use a physical server that would run a single operating system with one or few services. This would then mean that we're hardly utilizing the resources on the physical server. In addition to this, it also meant that we required an additional physical server for each service we wanted to run within our network. To start allowing us to fully utilize our servers more efficiently and effectively, we then had the ability to use what's known as virtualization. Virtualization allows us to run multiple operating systems and applications on a single server. These are known as VMs, or virtual machines. As you can see in the example on the screen, we have our physical server, as before. However, on top of this, we can install what's known as a hypervisor. A hypervisor is a piece of server virtualization software that runs on top of the physical server and makes it possible for us to run multiple virtual machines on our physical server, as we can see at the top of the example. The hypervisor will provide the VM's allocated resources like CPU, memory, and storage. So as you can imagine, there are a number of benefits to utilizing virtualization within our network. These include the ability to easily migrate virtual machines between servers without disruption or downtime, the increased efficiency and cost effectiveness of the server. This is because we can now run more than one server or service on a server. It can also provide high availability of production services this is because we have the ability to migrate virtual machines in order to take servers down for maintenance without affecting the virtual machines and services running on them. Finally, it provides a faster provisioning of applications and resources. This is because with virtualization, we can simply spin up another virtual machine in order to provision our application, whereas before we need to obtain a physical server in order to provision the service. In addition to this, we can also add additional resources to virtual machines extremely easily with the virtualization. For example, if we want to add some more memory to a virtual machine, we can do this through the hypervisor. If we wanted to do this with a physical machine, we'd have to physically add the memory. So as mentioned before, the hypervisor is the software that runs on the physical server and is used to create the virtual machines and allocate resources from the server. There are two types of hypervisors available to use and which we'll take a look at shortly. These are type one and type two. First of all, type one hypervisors. This is a hypervisor that runs directly on the hardware of the server. These include VMware ESXi, Citrix Zen, KVM, and Microsoft Hyper-V. An example of a type one hypervisor can be seen in the example on the screen now. Next up, Type 2 hypervisors. These are slightly different to Type 1 hypervisors in the sense that they run on top of an existing operating system. As you can see on the example on the screen, we have our operating system and then the hypervisor sat on top. An example of this being your PC at home. You could be running Windows 10 and then a hypervisor on the top of that in order to create virtual machines. Some examples of Type 2 hypervisors are Oracle VirtualBox and VMware Workstation. Before we end the video, and whilst we're on the topic of virtualization, I just wanted to provide an overview of containers. So containers differ slightly to virtual machines in the sense that they provide an isolated environment where applications can run. The container will contain only the application and the dependencies it needs to run, and doesn't contain an operating system, like we would if we created a virtual machine. This then means our container is extremely lightweight and only contains what it needs to run. How this works, if you take a look at the example on the screen, is by installing the operating system on a physical server. From here we'll have what's known as a container engine that will run the containers and allow them to communicate with the operating system. Using containers provides a number of different benefits. Firstly, as the container images do not contain any operating systems, they're extremely small and lightweight, as they only contain the applications and dependencies the application requires to run. Secondly, this means that the container has an extremely fast load time, as the application doesn't need to boot an operating system first. It instead uses the kernel of the host operating system, which is already running, thus speeding up the boot time. Thirdly, as containers contain everything required to run, the container will work on any machine. Basically, if it works on one machine, it will work on another. Lastly, even though containers run on the same operating system, they're isolated from each other. So if one crashes, it doesn't affect the others. There are a number of different options for container engines that are available. 
These include Docker, Rocket, Open Container Initiative, LexD, Linux vServer, and Windows Containers. And there we have it. That's a complete overview of virtualization, hypervisors, and containers, and the benefits of each. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. Apart from that, remember to subscribe and like the video for more CCMP Enterprise videos. Hope you've enjoyed, and I'll catch you next time.